everyone, I'm Tamlin and this is Sewn on the Time. Thank you for coming back and waiting patiently for my new video. I know I haven't been very frequent in the past few weeks but for one reason or another I just haven't been able to get videos filmed and edited. Sam hasn't been able to get videos filmed and edited <laughs> because he's been working away a lot and we were in New York so it's been a little while but I'm here again. So thank you for being here too. <laughs> I also just wanted to say a big thank you to Nikki and Rachel of the Stitch Sisters because they featured me on their What We Love This Week series, which was a couple of weeks ago now and they featured a few YouTube vloggers and I was one of them. So thank you so much, ladies. I love watching them. So it was a real, privilege for me to be mentioned in one of their videos. It was lovely. So thank you to the people that have come over to my channel from the Stitch Sisters and thank you for subscribing. It's brilliant to have you here. Also just a little thank you to Elisa from The Happy Hive who also featured me in a video that she made about her favourite sewing vloggers. So I'll leave her channel below and you can go and check her out. She's quite new to YouTube but she's made a few videos now and I love watching them so thank you Elisa. Right, I'll start off with what I'm wearing. I am wearing the Paper Cut Patterns Pinnacle Sweater. You may notice that I look quite casual, maybe? I've just got back from work. I was teaching PE today, so I am in PE kit, and I'm going to CrossFit in about 45 minutes, so there was no point in getting all dolled up for the video. So, take me as I am. <laughs> So this sweater is made in just some sweatshirt jersey in khaki green that I bought in Amsterdam last year and it's super cosy, it's got the lovely cross detail on the front, I'll put a video in to show you that and yeah I really like it, lovely and cosy, love the big cuffs. So I'm here today to talk to you about the things I made in April and a couple of my favourite things of the month. Now I feel like April was so short, it was here and then it was gone, I think perhaps because the first week was the excitement of going to New York. The second week and a bit was being in New York. Then it was being sofa ridden with jet lag for a few days and then going back to work and it's just been a whirlwind, I felt. So I didn't actually make an awful lot in April, but I did make a few things that I'll talk to you about. And we'll start with the Tilly and the Buttons Ness skirt. So I made the Tilly and the Buttons nest skirt with fabric from Fabric Magpie. Now Boz contacted me a few weeks ago and asked if I would like to feature on her blog as a guest and she doesn't have a specific blogger team but she likes to invite different people to guest blog for her and she asked me if I would be the guest blog for April and of course I jumped at the chance as I really like Boz, she's lovely and I love her business and I've bought from her before and I know the fabric's always lovely quality so I obviously said yes. I was allowed to choose two metres of fabric so I was a little bit cheeky and said could I have one metre of one fabric and one metre of a different fabric and Boz said yes so I had a very clear picture in my head of what I wanted to make. I wanted to make a full outfit, the Tilly and the Buttons nest skirt with the Tilly and the Buttons Nora top. The Tilly and the Buttons nest skirt, I'll stop calling it Tilly and the Buttons nest skirt, let's just go with nest skirt. The nest skirt I made in a black stretch denim and I needed less than a metre to make that skirt which was brilliant. And I made the mini version, I top stitched in yellow thread yellow top stitch in thread so that really stands out and you'll see from the pictures it's just a great basic skirt. It looks really good with the yellow and black leopard print top that I made the previous month and it just works as a whole outfit. I like the way that the top stitch in thread matches in with the yellow of the top and yeah I was really happy with it so thank you to Boz for inviting me to guest blog for Fabric Magpie. I really enjoyed the experience and if you would like to go and read more about those makes, I'll leave a link to the blog post down below and you can go and check it out. Oh, just a little side note about that nest skirt. We had to leave to drive to Manchester Airport at 2.30am and I didn't bother going to bed because I thought there's not really much point. So I stayed up sewing 
and I was still sewing my nest skirt at about 1.45 a.m. <laughs> so I just finished it in time to take with me and get some cool photos when we were there. So yeah, just thought you might like to hear that. Right, the next thing I made was a make for the Minerva Crafts blog. So I chose this incredible tropical print jersey. At the time I didn't actually know what I was going to make with it, but then once it arrived I thought these would make a really cool pair of summer PJs, like really bright, fun, colourful PJs. So I used the Tilly and the Buttons Nora top again. I have a little bit of an obsession with that pattern at the minute and I've made now four and I've got plans for more. So I made that and I used some plain blue jersey for the neckband, which I got from First for Fabrics. And then I made the True Bias Hudson pants, but I made the cropped version this time. Again, using some of the plain blue jersey from First for Fabrics. I used ribbon for the waist tie and I'm really, really happy with them. I've worn them so much already. So they will be going onto the Minerva Crafts blog in a couple of months time. We'll put a couple of pictures in here so you can see what they look like. <laughs> I would definitely recommend the Hudson pants and any top pattern really, but the Nora top is my fave. I would really recommend that as a good pajama sort of lounge suit combination. It works really well. Right, next thing I made was a Megan Nielsen Jarrah sweater with fabric from First of Fabrics and it was a French cherry that I used in this gorgeous leopard print, pink and blue leopard print. And I made the curved hem version, but I used the cuffs, the cuffed sleeve. So you'll see from the pictures, I love it. I love the shape of it. The only thing I'm not 100% happy with, I'll try and put in a couple of close-ups, but the hem, I don't know if I did it wrong or if the instructions just weren't the best or what, I don't know. But to get the curved hem, it suggested that you use some of that hemming tape to sort of make it nice and neat. And then to sew down the sleeves and the sides and then to top stitch around the bottom. But obviously it's a curved hem at the front and the back and the back's lower than the front. So I did that, but I didn't find it easy. I don't know whether my hemming tape was too deep or if I was using it wrong, but I found that the hem has got some little folds of fabric in because obviously it's a curve, so it's not all going to fold over exactly. So I didn't know, do I need to snip into it to make it a nice neat curve? I don't know. So if anybody's made that or have made something similar, so something out of jersey or sweatshirt in with a curved hem, maybe if you could give me some advice on how to get a really nice neat shape because I feel like it's not an, an exact neat curve. I feel like it's got a couple of little slight points, which isn't ideal really. It's not a pointy hem, it's a curved hem, <laughs> supposedly. So yeah, any advice would be great, but I love it. It's probably me being self-critical. Anybody else probably wouldn't notice these faults, but I have. I love wearing it still. I'm not gonna stop wearing it, but for future reference, if you've got any advice on how I can improve that, that would be awesome. And I think the last thing I made in April was my Nina Lee Portobello trousers. Now, I started them quite some time ago. You might remember I did share the fabric earlier in the year. It was a black and white checked, well, sort of black and grey checked Ponte Roma from Ponte Roma jersey. It was described as a Ponte Roma, so I was expecting something quite firm, but it came and it was very stretchy and lightweight. So it's from Minerva Crafts. Again, it's for their blog. So I received that fabric in order to provide them with a blog post. I chose to make the Nina Lee Portobello trousers, which are designed for woven fabrics. And after watching the Stitch Sisters review of that pattern a few months ago, Rachel made hers out of a stretch fabric. So I decided to do the same. You'll see from the pictures, I feel like they look great. I'm really happy with them to a certain point. I did have quite a lot of, not trouble as such, but I had to do quite a lot at the end stage to get them to actually fit because I should have trusted my instinct and size down. I just went for my size according to the pattern packet, looked at the measurements, looked at the finished garment measurements, went with that size, size 12. I didn't account for the fact that the fabric was very, very stretchy. So when it came to 
so I made the trousers as normal but stitched all the way up the crotch seam so not leaving any space for a zip because it wouldn't be necessary. I had the darts and the pleats in and I was ready to attach the waistband and I tried them on and they were just huge, huge. So I figured out, I thought maybe once I put the waistband on it'll all be okay. <laughs> so I put the waistband on just as you would with a hem band on a sweatshirt and still too big obviously. So I set about making some little alterations so I took each side of the waistband in a bit and all I did was folded it but sort of did it in a neat way and then top stitched down each side and then I've attached a button on each side you'll see and just to give it I don't know just a a more interesting look I suppose. I followed Rachel's advice in her video which was to do with the pleats at the front and I top stitched those down to make them sit a bit flatter rather than puffing out which they did a little bit and I was left with some excess fabric at the back underneath the waistband so I ended up unpicking quite a bit of that overlocking at the back not the most fun I've had and sort of reattaching that but taking some of the fabric out now I just guessed how much I didn't really I estimated and I think there's still a bit more could come out so I might decide to adjust that in time or I might just leave it I don't think it's hugely noticeable they are so so comfortable I will wear them definitely yeah I am happy with them but I'll know for next time that I definitely need to size down on account of the stretchiness of the fabric Right, so that is everything I made in April and now I'm going to show you a couple of my favourite things. Well, I'll talk to you about a couple of my favourite things. So the first one of those things is going to be my So Haley Jane box from April. Now I'm not going to do a full unboxing, which I've done in previous months, because Haley actually did a fantastic unboxing on her channel and if I was to do an unboxing now, the, the May boxes are now coming out, so it's a bit late in the day. But my box was a little bit special this month and I thought, well in April, and I thought I would show you why. So when I went to the dressmakers ball in March I was talking to Hayley and she said that she had kept something for me and she was supposed to bring it with her to give me as a little present but she'd forgotten it. So she'd actually put that in my box in April which was this lovely patch. So if you remember from a previous unboxing I talked about how this was in one of the classic boxes I think in a previous month and I loved it and I was quite sad that because I just get the mini box I didn't get one of these and Hayley saw that video and was so lovely and kept one for me and yeah I adore that it's so cute so it's one stitch at a time and it's just lovely so yeah thank you Hayley for that and the other lovely surprise in my April box was a card and a little gift because it was my one year anniversary of being a subscriber. So Hayley put in a lovely card to thank me for one year of being a subscriber with a lovely message inside. So there we go. And the most gorgeous little gift, which is from a maker called Clarabella Makes. Now, unfortunately, she recently closed down her Etsy shop. I think she may still have a couple of things on there, or I know that you can get some of her products on certain people's websites like Sew Me Sunshine I think has some of the necklaces on sale which I've got because my husband bought me one for Christmas but I got this gorgeous little pin badge so I'm holding my hand right in front of my face <laughs> this gorgeous little pin badge which is made up of sort of scrabble tiles and it says so so thank you so much Hayley, that's such a lovely thing to get in your one year subscriber box and I didn't even realise it was my one year anniversary so thank you very much, it was a lovely surprise. And I don't want to make this video too long but my other favourite is obviously New York. I had the best time, Sam had the best time, it was just wonderful. I'd never been, I'd never been to America, neither of us had and just from the moment we got there we just loved every minute. We loved the size of everything. I was just walking around looking up all the time and I just loved it. I loved the vibe of the city. I loved all of the different sort of places you can go to. So we spent days and times in different 
areas of New York. We're going to put a little montage of photos at the end so you can have a little look at some of the things that we did. But we did things like going to the baseball, got rained off halfway through which was a shame, it was the only time it rained the whole time we were there was when we were at the baseball but it was still fun, it was a great experience to be at the Yankee Stadium, it's huge but yeah that was great fun. We went to Brooklyn which I loved, I loved walking across Brooklyn Bridge, I found it so special and just yeah I really really loved it. We went to some incredible restaurants, Champ's Diner being one of them and that was in Williamsburg. We went to the Brooklyn Brewery and went on the brewery tour which I loved. We went to a couple of rooftop bars which were incredible and just looking out at the view was just awesome. One of my best friends in the world who I've been friends with since we were little children. She is an air hostess so she is cabin crew for British Airways and she had a New York flight in that week that we were there so she had a night in New York. We got to meet up and have some drinks and have a really great time in New York which was just incredible. You know two girls from the northeast of England being friends for over 30 years and then there we are in New York randomly meeting up with each other and yeah it was great fun. We went to do some karaoke and I was singing was questionable but <laughs> apologies to anybody that was in that karaoke bar. Um, the margaritas may have had something to do with that. <laughs> but yeah that was amazing and what was also incredible was the One World Trade Centre and the 9-11 Museum. I mean it was incredibly difficult to be there but just very powerful and I think so so important. I found it very sort of, I don't, I can't think of the right word to say but just very emotional and very impactful being in the museum and you know we spent a long time there. I think it, it hit us both quite hard but we both you know thought it was so important that people go there and understand sort of yeah the the importance of it yeah but what they've done there is incredible sort of the the memorials and the one world trade center is just so incredible the views that you get out across new york was yeah that was amazing very very special and what else did we do oh we did some fabric shopping i say we sam tagged along <laughs> it was just me went to mood found that <laughs> overwhelming. I think a lot of people have said that and I think you need to go to Mood with a specific project in mind but I liked going there. We saw Swatch. Swatch? Yeah, <laughs> the dog and we had a look around but it's just so big and there's so much there that you, I felt like you couldn't really see because it's all on the rolls and you can't really get a good view of everything but you know we were there and we had to go to Mood. We did find a fabric shop that I preferred which was called B&J Fabrics and I'm going to share some fabrics that I got in my next video which is going to be a fabric haul. I'll show you what I got in that one but yeah I really liked it in B&J Fabrics. Much more calm, spread out, all on one floor. Samples of all of the fabrics hung up on little rails so you didn't have to go and look through all of the rolls, you just looked through the samples on the rails and then you chose the one that you wanted, took it off the rail took it over to somebody that worked there and they went and got the rule for you and you know sorted it all out. So yeah I really liked being there. Oh, it was just incredible. So yeah we were leaving and we were already saying about going back. We already wanted to go back. It was just so incredible. There's so much more that we didn't do that we would like to do. So we'll definitely be going back. If you haven't been to New York I would highly recommend it. And yeah, that was definitely my favourite of the month, probably my favourite of the year, maybe even one of my favourite things ever. <laughs> so yeah, loved it. So we'll leave you with some photos from New York so you can see what we got up to. And thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing and commenting. And if you haven't subscribed, it'd be awesome if you did. So you can see more videos of me rambling, <laughs> chatting, sharing things that I've made, talking a bit of nonsense. <laughs> Thank you for coming back and I'll see you again soon. Goodbye.
so you'll be able to check it out then but we'll put a couple so I just moved my bit of paper <laughs> but we'll couple of <laughs> oh, I can't talk but we'll, we'll <laughs> give up 